39 Italian immigrants are victims of lynchings across the United States between 1886 and 1916. This photograph, taken in September 1910, shows the lynching of two Italians in Tampa, Florida. The next day it appears on hundreds of postcards. The largest lynching in the history of the United States takes place in New Orleans in 1891 and involves the murder of 11 Italian immigrants. Lynching was a form of murder, a form of punishment that was directed overwhelmingly at African Americans. So I think that the fact that you have these number of instances of Italians being lynched in the late 19th, early 20th century, I think speaks to the, to the racial component, the fact that they were seen as not quite white or what some historians have described as in between white and black. By the end of the 1800s, New Orleans is one of the most prosperous cities in the United States. Through its port pass most of the agricultural goods produced in the south of the country, and it is also the point of entry for imports from South America and Europe. The city has close commercial ties, particularly with Sicily, where it buys lemons and oranges. New Orleans is also the center of the cotton and sugarcane industries, both based on the work of African Americans. When slavery is abolished, many blacks leave the plantations. To replace them, American employers recruit thousands of Italians, especially Sicilians, ready to do jobs that no whites are willing to do. There were tens of thousands of Italians living in New Orleans, a sizable population, many of whom have been recruited to work in uh, agriculture, in agricultural communities. And it has been speculated that one of the reasons why uh, they were aroused so much hostility, it was partly the idea of, of obviously crime syndicates, but also that they lived often in close proximity with black Americans, uh, worked with black Americans, and so they were, they were not clearly separating themselves uh, from black Americans, and this aroused a lot of hostility on the part of white Americans. The arguments that were made for recruiting Italians are interesting because they basically indicate that they would make better Negroes than the Negroes, that they would work harder, and that they were of a higher caliber of people, and that they would displace black workers, and that makes them both desired and undesirable at the same time. Most of the Italian immigrants live in the poorest areas of the city. They continue many of the customs and traditions of the rural communities they come from. By the 1890s, the Italian community in New Orleans has grown to more than 30,000 people. Along with the farm workers, there are also artisans, fishermen, and merchants who begin to immigrate from Sicily. The Italians' growing numbers and the commercial success caused some resentment, as seen in a report by the office of the mayor, Joseph Shakespeare. The report describes the Italians as filthy in their persons, and coming from the worst classes of Europe, and adds, they don't learn our language, and monopolize the trade of fish, fruit, and oysters. Meanwhile, the newspapers of New Orleans are warning the city about a bloody feud between two gangs of Sicilian longshoremen. The chief of police, David Hennessy, is responsible for investigating it. On the night of February 11, 1891, Hennessy is ambushed. He is alone and is hit by 12 bullets fired from sawed-off shotguns. Hennessy fires back but is overwhelmed. The assassins disappear in the dark. Before dying, the chief of police manages to say a few words to his rescuers. The Dagos got me. Dagos is already the most common derogatory term in America to indicate Italian immigrants. The mayor of New Orleans declares the killing the work of the mafia. He orders mass arrests in the Italian neighborhoods. 
150 Italian immigrants are picked up and interrogated. The eyes of all America are on New Orleans. Nine Italians are put on trial. For many, the verdict comes as a shock. All of the defendants are found innocent for lack of evidence. However, they are not freed from prison. For the American citizens of New Orleans, the acquittal of the Italians was a miscarriage of justice. And so they decided then uh, that it was necessary to take justice into their own hands when the court system had failed them. And uh, a mob of several thousand citizens uh, was incited to violence. The day after the nine Italians are acquitted, an announcement appears in the main newspapers of New Orleans. It's signed by the most prominent citizens of the city and summons the public to a mass meeting. A prominent New Orleans lawyer, William Parkinson, speaks to the gathered crowd. When courts fail, the people must act. What protection is there left us when the very head of our police is assassinated by the mafia and his assassins are again turned loose on the community? Will every man here follow me and see the murder of Chief Hennessy vindicated? A crowd of 10,000 attacks the main prison of New Orleans. With the help of the prison warden, all the Italian inmates are identified. The prisoners plead in vain for mercy. Nine are killed in a hail of gunfire. Two are hanged in front of the prison. The response to this from the citizens of New Orleans was relief. You know, they had done their patriotic duty. Uh, the response from Americans around the country was similar, uh, that there was uh, the threat of organized crime in New Orleans and that the lynching had shown Italians in New Orleans and around the country that this threat would not be taken lightly and that uh, the mafia would not be permitted to take root and flower here as it had done in Italy. In addition to the 11 lynched in New Orleans, 28 more Italians are lynched across the United States during the 30 years that follow. Between 1882 and 1951, there are a total of 4,730 lynchings in the United States. More than 70% of the victims are African Americans. The remaining 30% are Italians, Mexicans, Native Americans, Chinese, and Jews. Although lynching was primarily a form of punishment that was doled out to African Americans, the lynching of the 11 Italian Americans in New Orleans is the single largest lynching in American history. Lynching was primarily a, a way of disciplining people who were outside the boundaries or perceived to be outside the boundaries of civilization, so African Americans, Italian Americans, whenever they would do something that suggested that they were not keeping in their place. This would be used as a form of discipline, a public violent form of discipline, to demonstrate to uh, members of the dominant group that they were still in control, 